Greetings to you in the gracious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to this YouTube channel of Pastor Joseph Prasanna Kumar. If you are visiting us for the first time, I wish you a very warm welcome and if you are a regular visitor, please share this link with others, your friends and family and be blessed. We are going through a series on the life of Old Testament Joseph and as we go through his life based on what the Bible teaches us from the book of Genesis, we are picking up a few points and with the help of God and with the help of Holy Spirit molding our lives in to ensure that we lead a life pleasing in His sight. So as we continue this study, Genesis chapter 45 verse 16 going on to chapter 46 verse 7. So please keep your Bibles open as we go through these passages. The first portion or the first topic what I would like to segregate here is we would like to see Pharaoh's support. But before that, in the last message, we have understood that Joseph had declared himself to his people. The family was reunited in Egypt, the brothers at least. Having and we also note the Bible also tells us that the Egyptians and the officers noted that Joseph was crying out loud. The entire Pharaoh's household heard it. Now in response to that, we see Pharaoh's support recorded in verses 16 to up to 20 of chapter 45. What this tells us is when God is at work, he will make the enemies, even the enemies live at peace with you. And why do I say this? Pharaoh and Israel were not yet on hating terms, were not yet, they did, their relationship did not come to a point they were, where they were hating one another and that happens in Exodus. But because of the class difference between Egyptians and the Hebrews and especially the sons of Jacob because they were shepherds, there was, the Hebrews were detested in general. They were not appreciated. They were looked down, they were frowned upon. And when you frown upon someone, what do you do? You just keep them at bay. But here, Pharaoh was pleased with the plan and so were the officials. He gave them transport and supplies for them to get back to where they were staying and to bring back Jacob and his entire household. This is a reflection of what the psalmist captured in Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And that's how Pharaoh, we can interpret Pharaoh's support. Dear brothers and sisters, are you in a situation at home or at work or in the society where you are facing stiff challenge from someone, where someone is being very unpleasant with you? Do not fear. You have God on your side and the Bible tells us that when God is at work, he will make even the enemies live at peace. And the Bible also tells us that God will make a table before you in the presence of your enemies. We next move to verses 21 to 23, where we read about the supply that Joseph provides. That's the plan which Joseph makes to Pharaoh and Pharaoh approves of the plan. Joseph provides for the supply, transport and also for the garments. But we must also note that he has additional supply for Benjamin, that is the brother from his own mother. After recognizing the repentance of their brothers, Joseph is very generous in his dealings with the brothers. He does not hold the past against them. In a similar manner or even more, our Heavenly Father, when we repent and when we return to Him, He equips us with much more than we need. Dear brothers and sisters, as His representatives, as ambassadors of Christ on earth, you and me are called to do the same. Has anyone wronged you? Today is the time for you to forgive them and forgive them completely and be generous with them. What we also see is a very strong instruction from Jacob to his brothers in verse 24. He tells the brothers not to quarrel or strive among them. 
because now remember a few chapters ago the brothers told Jacob that Joseph was killed by a wild beast now they had to reverse the story they told Jacob imagine if you were ever caught in a situation like that where you had to reverse a lie and tell a truth how delicate you would be feeling i don't know about you but at least as far as i am concerned i would be looking for whom to blame and that's exactly what i think joseph meant when he told his brothers do not quarrel among yourselves today we live in an imperfect world but we the church we are the bride of christ the church is being made ready for the christ's return and paul says in his epistles as far as possible live at peace with one another we need to live in peace with our neighbors during our earthly journey this is the foundation to follow god's command which is love your neighbor as yourself dearly beloved brother and sister is there someone that you can show this love to today perhaps god is speaking to you right now through this message that you need to be more loving let us move on to the next section in this uh, today's portion that is from verse 25 to 27 that is jacob is surprised jacob's most loved son who was presumed dead till now is now alive again this is the word that jacob got that joseph is the ruler of egypt jacob's spirit he was down ever since the news of joseph's death but now he is revived again dear friends when jacob had heard the word his spirit was revived today you and me have a chance have an opportunity to revive ourselves every day by turning to god's word the question is are you and i spending enough time to get revived if not now is the best time to turn to god After having the news the excited Joseph now makes preparations to get back and this is recorded in verse 28 right through to the first verse of chapter 46 and Jacob is now referred to as Israel when he is moving out of Canaan he is now moving out as a nation not as an individual you and i we represent god's family we are not an individual therefore when people see us we should be seen by them in the likeness of Christ as the image bearers of Christ as ambassadors of Christ we cannot be a church by ourselves we can be a church only with others like paul said we are all different parts of a body the church and the reference to the human body that's the passage that i'm referring to from paul's epistle yes the church is made of mistakes but the thing but the key and important thing is that god has not given up on us Take the example of the seven churches which are listed in the book of Revelations. Each church had a characteristic and some of them were far from perfect. But God did not give up on any church. He visited all of them. He gave his word to all of them. He walks and lives among us today in a similar manner. Irrespective of what we are, God is giving his word to us. God is visiting us. and asking us to turn towards him the god of isaac is the god of jacob and jacob inherited the promise from isaac when we are at crossroads of our life we must take counsel from god and that is what we see jacob doing in the first two verses the bible tells us in proverbs lean not on your own understanding but trust in god what we see as a result ha- happening between verses 2 to 5 is that Jacob is leaving Canaan he is returning Jacob's name is called twice in old testament times calling a name twice indicated emphasis and we see that when Abraham was offering Isaac Abraham Abraham we also see that when Samuel was as a little child was called by God Samuel Samuel We also see that when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke to Martha when Martha was concerned about the preparations at home he called her Martha Martha similarly Saul when he was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church God encountered him and called him Saul Saul 
in this in the passage today Jacob's name was called out twice today dear brothers and sisters God is calling out your name not once not twice but many times he is at the door of your heart knocking on the door and calling you by your name are you willing to listen to his call and turn to him and offer your life up to him because when you do that just like Jacob Jacob left with peace and assurance from God a small nation moved to Egypt and it turned into a nation of millions in the book of Exodus and now we see today Israel is one of the most advanced countries in the world all this happens when you are obedient to God's word today are you opening the door of your heart and letting Jesus in dear friends if not now is the time for you to answer God's call and let him into your heart let him take control over your life and let him lead you the rest of the way shall we close our eyes in prayer Heavenly Father Lord we want to thank you for giving us your word we want to thank you for the life of Jacob and Joseph through whom we have learned this lesson Lord just as you have called Jacob twice Lord we know that you are calling every brother and sister twice today Lord because you want them to hear and note the emphasis in the message that you are giving them through this message Lord Father God we pray that every brother and sister listening to this message Lord will turn their heart towards you will open their ears to hear your cry and will let open the doors to let you into their hearts so that you will reign supreme Lord we pray that you will dwell with them and in them and may they experience peace and multiplication in everything they do because we ask this in the precious mighty and matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen